Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com here, back today with another daily crypto update. As per usual, I'm going to be going over Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, NEO, Vertcoin, Monero, Omisigo, and Lisk. All of those in a more detailed technical analysis in just a second on TradingView. First off, I'll start by giving you an update on, you know, what's been going on with the general market and the altcoins. I've already made a video kind of going into more details on, you know, what I think will happen now that the SegWit fork is canceled. So definitely check that out. I posted that earlier this morning and I've also made a video on, you know, the top 10 altcoins to profit off, I guess, the rebound from from all this news. So those are two different videos that you should definitely take a look at. But just to give you a quick update, Bitcoin has still been acting pretty strong. You know, it peaked at about, uh, let's see, it went up pretty high here, as you can see, after the, the cancellation news of the Segwit2x hard fork. So it got a bit of a spike up to 7,800, but fell back down from that. Still holding relatively well, though. Um, and as per usual, quick shout out to Coinbase. If you haven't purchased cryptocurrencies yet, go check them out. I have a referral link in the description. You can get $10 free when you sign up. And as far as the altcoin goes, you know, Ethereum is actually acting better than expected. Up pretty nicely here and... Um, is looking really good on the chart. I'll get to that as well soon. But, you know, some big movers here. A lot of my predictions came true. You know, NEO bouncing big time, Monero. These are all cryptocurrencies that I've, I called were going to bounce big time. And, you know, Litecoin is not acting great. Now, I'll get to that on the chart because there's actually a reason for that. And it's not all bad, but it's kind of, you know, a shame to not see it be a bit higher today. Um, but like I said, there is a reason for that. And, you know, list doing good. Uh, just a lot of cryptocurrencies here, a lot of the altcoins doing really well. So mostly um, green across the board here for many of the altcoins. And it'll be in really interesting to see how all of this pans out in the next coming days, which ones will really take the lead. And, you know, Grossel coin, for example, up pretty nicely as well. Might as well mention that. Now, other than that, let's get right into the daily schedule here for this one because I've already updated you all a lot on, you know, the Segwit2x hard fork. So let's start off with good old Bitcoin here. And what's going on with Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is in a bit of a tricky situation right now. It's really hard to see what it's going to do. Now, the indicators are looking pretty good, obviously, because it did, you know, have a, a good day today. So we're back in the, the overbought area, but that can be bullish when there's strength in, you know, a cryptocurrency. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But the fact that we broke back into the 70 range is indeed a bullish signal. You know, the histogram is starting to turn back over. We don't really know how much this will affect it for now, but the MACD is still kind of intact. And as far as the price action goes, here's where it gets interesting. So like I said, we moved up to, you know, uh, pretty high here. And we actually, buyers weren't able to sustain those levels. So as you can see, I'll zoom in just a tad, but... We have a long upper wick on this candle right over here, this long stick. And this means that buyers weren't able to hold these upper levels. So it sold off back down to, you know, where we are now, which is 6,450 more or less. And that corresponds to, you know, sort of the support that we're getting from the two candlesticks over here, which it's kind of holding on, you know, we'll see how it, how it acts around these, if you can really sustain those, maybe close above them. But the bottom line is that this big upper wick is definitely not the best sign. Now, the thing is that there's so much strength in Bitcoin, right, that it seems like it's not going to fall. But like I said in my, my video that I posted earlier this morning, it's, it only makes sense that it gets some kind of a pullback at this point, right? It just, it's very overextended. And, you know, maybe it'll be a small pullback down to sort of over here uh, near 6,000, uh, let's see, 6,950, let's say. Uh, or it could go down to this, you know, second trend line over here and test some lower levels like 6,000 uh, or we could see you know down the line it really falling back down to 5,000 but for now there's just a lot of strength so I think a bit of consolidation and a pullback to you know maybe this um, like I said 6,900 level uh, and, and maybe the second trend line are, are more likely at this point in time. Now could we see this go up in you know tomorrow and then just keep moving up that's that's definitely possible now, the thing we'll have to be looking for that, though, because it's really unpredictable as of right now, is can it, um, you know, get a next candlestick that uh, goes above and, and is able to hold above this high over here of 7,590? So basically, if we get another nice green day tomorrow, then it'll be looking good for, you know, maybe a continuation of the uptrend. Other than that, for right now, I, I kind of want to call the, the, 
the pullback here. It, it's just the most logical thing to happen after what's going on, right? And moving over now to Ethereum, that's looking really good. I'm actually thinking about purchasing some Ethereum here. Uh, of course, Ethereum is also experiencing some uncertainty of its own, but the technicals are looking, you know, really good. The RSI is, you know, uptrending slightly in the symmetrical triangle. We're now breaking to the higher levels of this. So we're probably going to test this downtrend line. We'll see if we can break above that. It'll be really bullish. If we're unable to break above it, uh, we're going to reject it. And of course, that, that won't be the best sign. But a lot of, a lot of things that I like here. The price action, we were able to break out of this downtrend line, which is just massive. So we cleared a lot of resistance. We're all still facing some uh, resistance. Let me draw that with a, a black support, uh, sorry, black horizontal line here. So you get a good idea. But this corresponds to the, um, the candlesticks back here, right? That are setting in quite a bit of resistance. So we'll see if we can get, you know, a closing candlestick above that tomorrow or something. But I would say if you take a look, for example, over here, right? where we had a couple days of consolidation, then a big green candlestick, which would correspond today where we peaked above the uptrend line and also the Bollinger Bands start expanding. It's kind of what we're experiencing over here, right? So if we get a candlestick like this tomorrow, we can really start to see a nice increase, right? Where we move back up to the, to the highs. You know, of course, we'll first test the 350 level, but then we can move pretty quickly to, uh, you know, 400. So I would expect some kind of move like this is seeming pretty likely to me based on the, how the candlesticks are, you know, very similar patterns, basically. And very bullish here on Ethereum, actually, uh, as far as technicals go. And what's funny is Litecoin is also in a very similar situation, uh, a little bit different. But basically, Litecoin had its big increase yesterday, if you all recall that. So that changes things a little bit, where today it didn't get as big as an increase, you know, as, as we saw. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because it got its big increase yesterday and today it's, it's still doing decent. What you have to be looking at now is, I think, back over here, right? And I talked about this um, in this area when we were back here. This didn't pan out. But now that we're, we cleared a lot of resistance out of the way, we're back uptrending and that will serve as support. You know, the Bollinger Bands are uh, expanding as well. We'll have the middle band that'll serve as support. And we're out of this downtrend line. We're all of out of all the messy resistance, you know, we'll of course struggle a little bit at this $66, $67 area. There's quite a bit of resistance there. But after that, you know, it's pretty much clear till uh, 80 and then the all time highs, right? Now, if you look at this big green candlestick over here, what we had after that was a bit of a, you know, relatively flat green candlestick, which is kind of what we're having now, right? And that's what I find really interesting is we did have a, a bit of an upper wick here, which we had. Um, yesterday and these two candlesticks are quite similar, you know, I have a bit of an upper wick, which isn't the best sign. But basically, I think that Litecoin is really has a good chance of taking out, right? Of course, I can't be 100% sure of this, but my gut feeling and I have experience in this, this industry, you know, you've seen how accurate I am with my predictions. I, I have a good feeling that we're going to get a, we could definitely get a pretty big run up here for Litecoin, uh, as with Ethereum, but of course, Litecoin will probably move pretty drastically if we get a move like this. So, I mean, just look at the candlesticks, right? Look at this one and this one and these two. They're very similar. We're now above the upper Bollinger Band. And as you can see what happens with Litecoin when we do that, we, get, we do tend to get pretty big run-ups, right? If we look back in the past, uh, one of the last times we had, you know, a closing candlestick, despite the upper wicks, we had multiple day run-up uh, after that. So that's definitely a pretty powerful sign for Litecoin. It's been seen in the past. And I kind of expect it to, you know, re-experience that um, now. And the indicators are looking good. You know, we got out of this whole mess, broke uh, above this this crossing, MACD pulling back up. Um, you know, I like it, Litecoin right now, and I'll be definitely considering adding to my position today. So I'll keep you updated on that. But moving over to Ripple, let's see what's been going on with that one. Pretty important to see. Um, Okay, so Ripple is in fact up today, up nicely. Now, unfortunately, it was not able to really hold above the black resistance line over here, which is currently at around 21 cents. Now, the indicators are looking really good. You know, we have our RSI that's currently back in the uptrending range now. MACD pulling back over after the long extended hook. That's a good sign. Histogram now moving positive. So we'll just see if it can really move back up and kind of hold above this black line. And that'll be a really good sign. Of course, we're going to face resistance from this downtrend line over here. But 
even if we get a little bit of consolidation up here, we could probably break out of that in the near future. So not looking too bad for Ripple, but I do want to see it really get above this black line and hold above that because otherwise we're just going to stay in this messy, you know, consolidation pattern, which wouldn't be great. Uh, let's move over to NEO now. Massive move, and, you know, I think it's fair to say that this is probably the reversal of NEO in the making. So it was acting pretty messy in the past couple days, but despite that, you know, it had its uptrending line supporting it, which made me think that it was going to get a good bounce, and it indeed did. So the RSIs are looking, uh, RSI is looking really good here, broke, you know, really just completely blasted through this, downtrend line which is of course bullish you know we're now back above the the 50 level on the rsi and macd still looking pretty flat the histogram is back in the positive range and uptrending so that's obviously a good thing now in my struggle a little bit here you know it had a big upper wick and it seems like it got kind of scared off from this resistance line over here so we may get a little bit more consolidation where it slightly trends back up before really being able to break through and move up until 40 but um you know it, it really depends kind of take a look what happened over here you know it, it failed but then it ended up breaking through we could have something like that here in the, the next coming sessions uh, overall though i wouldn't be worried for neo it may just need a little bit more time to, to really get uh set up well enough that it can really get a a massive breakout and, and i mean today it's up 18 percent so that's definitely nothing to spit on, but it's just that right now it's still in a little bit of a, in a resistance level, and you know it has so much room to move up. Pretty pretty amazing here for probably a good opportunity. Um, I'm not personally invested in Neo, but it's worth printing out. Of course, I, I never give out financial advice. I'm I'm really just here to share my opinion. Uh, Vertcoin. A lot of people will be asking about this one, and pretty interesting move for Vertcoin today. So like I said, Vertcoin is a bit of a wild card here, and it's hard to say what's really going to happen with it, but the indicators are, you know, turning bullish, of course, again, after a massive, you know, jump up today, up 30%. So, you know, we're, we're still not um, uptrending yet on the RSI, but we're definitely turning back up, putting in a bit of a, a low here at the 52. So that's a bit of a support level on the RSI. I might as well put that in now. So right over here is where we bounced off of. And we're moving back up. We'll obviously face some resistance at the 70 level on the RSI and the the downtrend, uh, sorry, the uptrend line that we had put in previously. So that's just something to be aware of, but not too significant as of right now. And as far as the histogram and the the MACD go, we're kicking back up on the MACD. So we'll see how this pans out. You know, this is a pretty extended drop. So usually the first time that it comes and tests the orange line, it doesn't make it after something like this. And yeah, that probably is going to be indicative of what's going to happen with the price as well. But the, the histogram is indeed moving upwards. And as far as the price action go, like I said, we, we bounced off this $3.30 level. Really now we're way above that, right? We're back to, to $4.61. And we actually did move way higher today, up until $5.84. So all the way up to almost this resistance level right over here, right? Which we haven't visited in now several days. So what does that mean? You know... It definitely has strength behind it still. People definitely want to buy a Bitcoin. I mean, look at this, up 31%. As of right now, though, I don't think we're going to get, you know, I don't think we're going to break through this $6 level just yet. So, you know, it might now, it's, it did fall below this this uh, resistance level, this pink line right over here at $4.87. So maybe we'll not be able to really close above that and we might just consolidate in here for a while. But, you know, the, the middle band is now going to start ser serving as some really good support, and that'll keep the prices up pretty high. So that's currently sitting at $3.79, and, you know, we'll just keep moving up probably. So what do I expect it to happen? Well, you know, it's moving back down a bit now, but I think it's either going to trade in the higher level of this range over here, so this pink line at 487 and uh, this red line, or, you know, it's actually going to be able to get some extra strength and be in between $4.87 and $6 for a while, you know, maybe a couple weeks where at that point it could get some more strength to, to break out. But I think it needs a bit of a break, right? It's been moving up a lot and, and very quickly. So, you know, it, it, it relieved a lot of pressure, which could make it, you know, get some ma massive breakout. And I do indeed think that despite the fact that it's looking good here, it'll probably need to take a bit of a breather uh, nonetheless. But Still bullish on, on Vertcoin, you know, up nicely. People are seeing the value in this one, so I'm really not concerned about it in the long term. Like I said, the, the more bullish case scenario here is that it just trades in this upper uh, 
range over here. That would be completely fine in, uh, in my book, right? So let's go over to Monero, having a really good day here as well. And one that I've been kind of calling on for a bounce. Let me see. I didn't want to put this exchange in. I um, usually use Bittrex here. So let's see. Um, today we broke out of the tighter range that we were in just yesterday, which is kind of what I called in my top 10 uh, altcoins for a rebound video. You know, really blasted through that, came in sort of, we did peak above this resistance level over here, but we didn't actually hold above it. So we're going to be looking to kind of do that in the next coming days. But let me go ahead and mark that. Obviously a lot of resistance there in the $120 level with previous candlesticks as well. But we, you know, we broke through this RSI resistance level at 57 and we're now over 70. So that's very bullish. You know, we might get start getting a really big increase like we had over here. So look at what happened um, after, you know, the range breakout there. A massive increase. And we could definitely see that again moving back up to the highs. I think that'll happen in the near future. You know, it may take a while, like a couple weeks, but it could happen pretty quickly as well. So there's no really telling, but it's looking really good here. Nothing is looking bad on Monero's chart as of right now. So, you know, MACD is starting to pull back up as well. We haven't seen that in a while. Hopefully we can get a really nice increase like over here. Same thing on the histogram. And other than that, you know, we'll, we're just going to have to wait and see now. Can we get a second update tomorrow where we're able to break and hold above this 121 area and, and sort of after that start getting a climb like we had over here? Or are we going to consolidate a bit for a couple days and then break out? You know, it's hard to tell, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. I think that we will be breaking above this. It's just a question of when. So if we don't break it right away, just expect some consolidation in between the 120 and uh, I guess 102, 104. But um, yeah, Monero looking good here. And I think it's, it's going to be on its way to uh, its all time highs again. Definitely really well set up and acting, you know, 100% as predicted, actually. So really nice on, uh, on Monero's part. Uh, oh, me say go. Uh, let's see what's been going on with that one. That'll be interesting to see. So definitely got a, a big bounce. You know, I wasn't 100% sure on what Omisego was going to do because it was acting pretty weak, but it completely recovered here, and it'll be looking pretty nice. Now, it does still have quite a bridge of resistance ahead, and, you know, it's been downtrending for a while now, even before all this drama. So it's going to have quite a few resistance levels. Um, I'm not going to draw them all in, but just so you get an idea, you know, the one that we put in today over here, and then, of course, we have, you know, all the previous upper weights of the candlesticks. So there's going to be quite a bit of resistance ahead for Amisigo, but that's not to say that it won't manage to break through that. Just something to notice. And, you know, the RSI, we're back above the 70 line. We made a massive move today, broke through a lot of resistance on the RSI and is in a really good position right now. Um, MACD has been very flat and is peaking back up. So we'll see if this can really start moving back uh, upwards, which it probably will start turning upwards. And as far as the price action goes, broke through, you know, this $6.77 resistance level. Now, we do, we're still not above this uptrend line. That's going to create some issues. We could definitely see this move above that, though, in the next coming days. But that's definitely going to be some pretty nasty resistance right there. Uh, we'll see how it acts around that. Um, with that being said, though, we do have the brown line that's currently at $7. That's going to start pulling back up probably and will serve as, you know, some nice support that can help the support the price uh, moving forward here. So Omisego definitely repaired some damage. Still not 100% out of the woods, but definitely on the path to that. Uh, finally, the last cryptocurrency of this daily crypto update is going to be Lisk. Let me go ahead and throw this one in there. And let's see, Lisk. Okay, so Lisk is similar to Litecoin, except that today it did have a really nice update, which Litecoin didn't get. Now, similarly to Litecoin, Lisk did have uh, an update, a pretty big update yesterday, and yet another one today, right? So a lot of strength, you know, probably people, you know, people love Lisk. It's a good, good cryptocurrency, no doubt about it. And I guess they just thought that this was the time to get back in. You know, it was definitely a bit oversold compared to where it was before. It's been downtrending for a while as well. So, you know, people wanted to scoop it up. It makes sense, right? And now massive, massive jump on the RSI above the 60 line right now. So we'll see if it can break through the 70 line. That'll be some added bullishness. Um, now we're going to have support from this middle band. We're going to have support from the uptrend line. It is pretty overextended today, so it may get a bit of a pullback. And, I mean, it did get a massive sell-off because it peaked today at all the way up to $7.59, right, which is 
uh, I think almost its all-time high right over here. So a very, very big jump that wasn't able to really hold. Like I said, $7.59. So we did sell off from that big upper wick. Now, of course, we could see more up, up days, you know, where actually, if we take a look over here, right, we had um, the first up day, second up day with a big uh, upper wick, big sell off day, caught ourselves back on the support and then started moving up really big. So actually, if you look at what happened over here, I wouldn't be surprised to see a copy of that um, for LISC. So that would be a pullback tomorrow uh, and then, you know, hopefully moving back up pretty quickly and go kind of parabolic like it did here back up towards, you know, it's, it's all-time highs near $8, uh, something like that, I think is probably pretty likely here for LISC. So definitely looking good as well. And, uh, you know, that concludes my daily crypto update. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been putting out a ton of videos. So please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, I really thank you all for the support. Really hope you enjoy this video. And, yeah, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like this video. Uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching, everyone.